So it's race day today, uh, the last round of Formula Drift 2015, possibly the last round at Arundo Speedway, which is kind of quite emotional because that's, that's where I got the kickstart to my career. But here we are, uh, 16 years later, competing at Irwindale Speedway for possibly the last time. I gotta say, like, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited, but extremely nervous. Right now, we're, we're the only team, or Gritty Performance is the only team that can possibly take away the championship from Ospo. I just have to drive my absolute best and not really worry about where Frederick finishes. But, uh... Nonetheless, I'm extremely proud of, you know, Frederick for his accomplishments this year. You know, he's got three podiums, all of which are first place. Uh, we have three podiums, which is a huge success for the Gritty team, considering that we've been struggling for the past couple of years, um, trying to get the car set up right and just trying to look for possibly the best um, setup with car and driver and team. I think we were able to achieve that this year. So there's a lot on my mind going into the final round, but um, I'm very excited and um, I'm just hopeful that we'll be able to put on a great show for the fans. Irwindale was crazy. Uh, I mean, crazy would be an understatement, but we had a lot of roadblocks. Um, we went through three engine swaps. We even built a Frankenstein engine at the venue at Irwindale. But I didn't want anything to stop me. I mean, a couple nights prior to that, my mom had posted something on Facebook saying, you can never beat those who never give up. And I just kept remembering that and telling myself, you know, no matter what happens, just don't give up. And my team, you know, was feeling the same way. They, don't, they didn't want to end this way. You know, it's the last round of 2015. We're sitting strong in points. And I can tell that they didn't want to let anything get in the way. So they did absolutely everything they could to keep the car running. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, <laughs> it was four engines. We were on our last leg in the, the tandem battles. Top 32 battle against Jonathan Castro. Right at the finish line on the second run, our engine died. And you know, at that point, during the halftime break, we first of all didn't have enough time to change, swap an engine. Second, we didn't even we didn't even have an engine. Um, so, you know, upon starting the car, you can just hear all this clicking and knocking going on. It just didn't sound healthy. You know, it was a significant power loss. Uh, it just sounded like crap but I wasn't gonna stop there. You know, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out with a bang. So I was determined to run the car as it was, even if it was on its last leg. So I told them to bump the idle so it would install, um, bump up the nitrous so we at least get a little bit more power and bump up the tire pressure to make sure that we didn't lose drift. And what that, that will, and it just took me all the way to the finals. It was crazy. <laughs> and Ken Gushi, a Formula Drift veteran since day one, hasn't stopped since now, 12 years ago. The Gretti Scion Racing, Anthem Tires, FRS, initiates in Justin Pollock. Some straightening there from Pollock, diving in, but uh, lacking the angle. Ken Gushi takes out the course marker. Oh, buddy! Woo! That could have been a lot uglier, to be quite honest. Yeah. Ken will have an advantage in hopes that he can make it back to the line. And Ken is going. Wow. Just, Ken he's just going back to the gladiators line. Gladiators doing it. We got a street fight. Ken is going back to the line even when he doesn't need to. I, I, I applaud the bravery there, but he has an opportunity to look at the vehicle if he wants to.
JTP has a zero. If he loses this uh, did bout... The did the judges default? They did. They default okay. to JTP. JTP has a zero. So if Gucci can make it through this run in the chase position, he would go up into the finals against, who do you know, Frederick Osbell. Now, if Gucci were to win against Osbell, we would all be saying, what if, if Osbell went out in the top 32? Who is the Norwegian Hammer going to go against? Justin Pollock or Ken Gucci? Again, if Gucci gets the win, it's a handgun tire, podium sweep. Justin Pollock lights up that rash performance Falcon tire, Ford Mustang. Gucci throws it in with that big contact, Ryan. As you said, he was deemed at fault. Justin Pollock. Gucci keeps it between the lines. Doesn't have an inactive chase, which I don't, I don't really perceive that like that now. But I would like to see him closer. Going to the judges. Pollock for Gucci. Slide up left for Pollock, right for Gucci. If Gucci wins, it's a hand go. Tire sweep! And there it is, and Gucci gets the win. Are you ready, Irwin now? The finals are upon us, and around the globe, it's an all style final. The champ, 2015 champion, world champion, Frederick, the Norwegian Hammer Oslo, is going against Ken, the Gucci, the Gucci Master, Gucci. Here we go, let's send it! Irwin now! Ken Gucci initiates great angle. Frederick Osbo is riding shotgun with Ken Gucci right now. Great transition. Ripping around is the Gucci. Wow, but look at Frederick Osbo. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, doctor, look at this. Unbelievable run and exclamation point on a phenomenal day and evening. Hope that final battle happens again next year in the finals. And I hope that if that happens, I have a car that's 100% with no roadblocks. And um, I wouldn't mind if I'm sitting in second place as long as I can beat them and take that first place trophy. I wish, you know, there's always gonna be a perfect world where you have zero car troubles we have a smooth run going into the finals. But then of course we don't live in a perfect world. But I think that's also what makes the story that much sweeter, is that we, we went through so much at Irwindale, and at any point of the weekend, any one of us could have given up. Any one of us could have been like, you know what, screw this. You know, we did all this for what? Not a single person on my team gave up. No one said any complaints. No one was annoyed at anything. We all just shared a common goal, and that was to do the best we can. And for that, I really appreciate everything that they did. As soon as Urban Day was over, my mindset was already looking at 2016. You know, every day I think about Long Beach, I think about how to initiate, I think about what I can do better compared to this year to you know, win the event. And it's just that, it's like trying to improve myself 
both mentally and physically to make sure I'm ready for whatever is being thrown at us. I mean, take for instance Irwindale, like, come on, who's gonna plan out that many engine failures? Hey, you can't, you can't write that. You can't plan for that. So it's just to you know keep a positive attitude um, and to never give up. Never ever give up.